that was presented uh, by the Society of Plowmen uh, to myself for services to the Society when I was chairman um, when, we, when the National was held in Oxfordshire, at Shillingford in Oxfordshire. It's a solver for an appreciation of services to the Society. So, what are your first memories of ploughing? Oh, Toby. It goes back so far. I've been passionately interested in ploughing for many years, even as a boy. Did your father, was he a, a no, he strong wasn't. ploughman? No, the governor was always known as a governor. Yeah. Never a father or dad, always the governor. Yeah. Tends to be a Victorian sort of man, but a sound man, a good husband man. And he, he didn't know a cultivator from a plough, but a wonderful stockman. So I'm really self-taught as far as ploughing is concerned. I won my first major match in 1948 and my last match in 2004 when mm -hmm. I retired. I saw playing through the hedge on, the, on my way to school and things like that, you see, and was fascinated by it as yeah. far in, in my early teens, very likely. Yes. And thought, I'd love to do that. It just, I was so intrigued with it, the way the soil came up the board and accelerated off the end of the board. Yes. And the slice was laid against his neighbour and that sort of thing. The whole thing was so fascinating. The Fairford, Farringdon, Philkins and Burford Ploughing Society came into being in 1948. Yes. Uh, on the amalgamation of four local ploughing clubs. Smaller clubs. That's right. They, they, they fell by the wayside and, the, and the, uh, the fellows involved with those clubs in their wisdom decided they would amalgamate and create Makes one, one ploughing plowing and hedging match, do you yes. see? Yes. As in 48. <coughs> and uh, since then, the, the um, Philkins, uh, sorry, sorry, the Fairford, Farringdon, and Philkins and Bridford Plows. Planning Society has become known, as, become known affectionately as the three F's and a B. <laughs> <laughs> you can interpret that how you like, but that's it. That's with affection it's used. Yes. And, and it's now become of national status. We are recognised. When I say we, I'm a life member of this society. And, uh, and, and we, we're now recognised as one of the premier societies in the country. Our own society. Uh, this uh, Philkins outfit now is um, is um, got a quite a young committee and very dynamic and very and very very keen and determined. To and these are local farm people yes. with, with farms and yes, yes, they're, they're farmers and farm workers. <coughs> some are even are associated with agriculture. Some are an auctioneer, involved, very much involved, and uh, and shopkeepers and things like that. Mm. I might say that the society we've got uh, something like two hundred and fifty members, paid up members. And they're all uh, they're all enthusiastic to, that this society should continue, be perpetuated. Mm. You see, mm. I notice in the programme for this coming Saturday's uh, match, the, you, the some classes ha are qualifiers for the national championships yes. for next year. Yes, and you have to win to qualify to yes. get to the national to go championship. Yes, to the British national championships. Right. And then you plough the next year at the British National, wherever it might be, and we move around. Now, we again, forgive me, I'm wearing a different, different hat. Uh, yeah, I'm funny. Uh, move around the country, you see. This year it's at York, next year it's in Kent, and uh, following you back up in Cambridge, and so on and so forth. Yeah. So the winners of the qualifying uh, classes uh, in the local matches will go forward for the next year for the British National. Yeah. And then if they win their uh, class then, it doesn't apply to every class, but in some class they win that and then they go forward to the world match. The class that you're most interested in is the high cut class, yes. and also known as the oat seed furrow. Uh, oat seed furrow. That's right. How is that particular to sowing of sowing and growing of the oat seed? The high cut plan was devised to accommodate the hand sowing of seed. Yes. So the furrows were so precise and 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 the comb was so sharp, the comb being the corner of the furrow uh, that's uh, uppermost. I was going to ask you that, comb, because it's known as lots of different Yes it is, names, comb or it? crest or, or top, or there's, there's yes. right. a lot of these names are parochial. Uh, it was so precise that the, the seed would broadcast, would bounce onto the sides like that and trickle down into the crevice, yes. in, into, into the slot known as the crease. Yes. You see, yes. and then uh, with a light set of horse harrows across the furrows, across the furrows, I emphasise, the seed was buried to a uniform depth in the creases. Yes. It would come up in drills. And judging this high cut thing is a, is a, is a very technical business, and uh, I would cringe if I was judged in my ploughing days by anybody other than a high cut champion ploughman, because there's so much to it. Yes. 
And it's got to be understood, you see, there's, there's, there's so many aspects to this. Straightness is just one of the things. I suppose that the cardinal sin in competition playing is crookedness. In my opinion, that would be the cardinal sin. If you cannot go straight, you've got no business in the field. The second to that would be, uh, the second uh, uh, worst thing would be um, paired work or coupled work, whereby you can see the furrows as coupled, because you, you were using two furrow plows, you understand, now with tractors. Right. In the horse days, of course, they were single furrows, but now with modern, relatively modern uh, tractors, we use vintage tractors really, but suffice it to say, they're still tractors of small horsepower, so we plow two furrows at a time. Now, if you can see those furrows, on the finished plot as as pairs or couples that is that is that is gas you've committed some ghastly sin then mm. uh, competition playing is rather like flying an aeroplane the tricky bit is the start and the finish mm. getting the thing off the ground and back on the ground again the bit in the middle is not too bad mm. we'll, there'll be two scratches scratch marks put in by the judge no by the plough by the competitor Right. The plough is not, the judge is not inside, he's probably on the road, he might be in the beer tent. Uh, We're not yeah. worried about the judge at this stage. Right. We've, got, we've, got to, we've got to appease the steward. the steward. The steward's going to be there and he's going to make sure there's no handling of the work after it's ploughed. And he's going to uh, suggest the depth that's got to be ploughed. He'll measure that from time to time and draw, take the task if it's too light or too deep. So the, uh, so the scratch is made and then against that uh, a furrow is put. Uh, and then you turn around against that and put an opposing furrow. So you start with two opposing furrows. And we build on that. And round, we go eight times round. And that's the crown. There are there's seven aspects to a high cut plant. There's the crown. There's soil availability. There's uniformity of furrow. There's double bearing. There's ins and outs on the end. There's the, there's the finish. And all these aspects mm. are worth up to 20 points. Yeah. So the point I'm making to you is this, back to this start and the finish being the tricky bits. They're the bits that catch the judge's eye. The start, if you start well, or if one starts well and straight and that sort of thing, it's going to influence the judge to some degree. He's going to, he'll probably pick you up quite high. Higher than he would do if he came along and saw it later on in the day. And the finish particularly, is this sort of guilt on the gingerbread. If you put a nice finish in there, a nice ream furrow, that's important. They're up to, up to 20 points each thing. Mm -hmm. So it is technical. Back to the, um, the, uh, the 3S and the B Society. I'm very proud to be associated with this society. have been for many years, as I say. And you might like to know that uh, we, have a, we have an area. Every society has its own area. Now, that's not adhered to strictly. It's not, it's not like fo fox hunting, whereby if the, if the if a, a foreign pack of hand came onto your territory, to all hell let loose. Mm. It doesn't work like that. But just a matter of interest to you, the Three Asthma B Territory is a 15 mile radius from Letchley Church Spire. And that's historic. And we're finding it increasingly difficult to find hosts, to find sites on which to plough. Yeah. We plough the last Saturday in September, and you can imagine our host is, is tremendous, wonderful, stalwart and sympathetic to what we're trying to do. Mm. But he sat back on his backside, keeping his land unploughed. He mustn't touch, well he can't touch it, we want to touch it, we want to plough it. So his neighbours are on, hypothetically ploughing and drilling and planting their corn and getting a head start on him. And if the weather sets in bad, well he's been waiting, well he's going to be very much out of pocket. And I was thinking actually today, or yesterday, that the you might think, well, he's getting a load of free ploughing done, yes. but it's all, all all over the place. What a good question to put. We don't plough the nasty bits, and we don't plough the stony bits, and we and we leave the corners and the and the and the, and the bits that aren't symmetrical, and yeah. we've got the car. The whole up. load has been trampled exactly down. Exactly right. Exactly. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. I was reading in the in the brochure uh, the about the horse harrow. Yes. And that is. The system that comes along after it's been after your seed is sown, yes, that, that pushes the that's a comb, of, yes, it brushes, brushes the, the comb in, into the crease yeah. and buries the, corner, the seed at uniform depth, yes, two or two and a half yeah. inches, shall we say, depends yes. on how sharp the comb is and how friable the land is. Do you yeah, see, yeah. so many imponderables, but, yeah, so but you're quite right, the harrow is a subsequent cultivation. Yeah. That leads to another thing, you see, it's a fascinating subject, there's so many aspects to it. In the early days, I mean, we had tw 20, uh, the, the standard Fortson tractor was the thing we won the war on, agriculturally, in the 
this country. That's all we had uh, on the farms, uh, 20 horse, horsepower. And, and uh, in those days, we reckoned, it was reckoned that you needed 10 horsepower per furrow. So that the 20, so the Ford, a standard Ford and tractor, 24 or 5 horsepower, would pull two and a half furrows. That is to say, two furrows under adverse conditions and three under ideal conditions. Mm. Ploughs have three principal components. The share, the mould board, and the coulter. The share makes a horizontal cut, the coulter makes a vertical cut, and the mould board inverts the soil. They're the, prin they're the principal components. And from early days, from, from horse ploughs, from ploughs used, used by oxen, through the modern complex multi furrow ploughs today, those three components still apply. It's fascinating, that's over a thousand years or so. The material use is different, of course. We're using high tensile steel now for the mould board. We're in the early days we were using wood. Fruit wood, incidentally. Because fruit wood, pear wood or apple wood, would scour or clean, run cleaner than elm or oak. Right. I noticed on the class four, no restriction on attachments. That's right, that's right. That's to do with the mould board, is it? Yes, that's an interesting question. I'm pleased you raised that, Toby, because now, with ordinary ploughing, you'll see all sorts of types of ploughing, from horse ploughing right through to multi-furrow reversible ploughing. With high-cut ploughing, we're allowed to use all sorts of extraneous attachments. There's a press on a given on each furrow. There's a press, a boat, and a seamer. These are purely um, um, items in an attempt to perfect the shape of the furrow. And these can, these, I mean, my imagination sort of stretches, these can be sort of knocked up, made, homemade. Yes, yes, yes they can. Blacksmith made. They can be. Blacksmith and, made. And you bolt them on yes, and you can do exactly them. Exactly right. All's oh, fair, all fair in love, war and high cut planning. Yeah. <laughs> you see? That's right. So, so you can get all sorts of fun. Yes, the rules that apply to this class, high cut planning, you must finish on time, you must be the given depth, and... Um, and that's about it, really. You mm. can drag the thing sideways if you want to, but right, it's, it's, it's the judge is going to be look what what the, what the plough does, not yeah. what the what the plough is. In the tractor high cut or oat seed for a class. All the ground is not necessarily ploughed. This is half a scratch opening. Uh, he'll complete the scratch by coming back against it. So as a result, there will be unploughed something like 24 inches or two foot. But uh, it'll be covered by the crown. There are some quite large, well, they're sods that yep. have been dragged up. Is he allowed to get off his tractor and move those? He's, he's allowed to handle it. He won't at this stage because um, It'd be a waste of time. When he gets to the bottom, then he's got the other the scratches completed. Then he'll walk up and pat it and kick it and tap it about to to um, make it look good. So in competition plan, you only actually drive uh, straight once by eye. Anyway, uh, you need three pegs to get it straight. Thereafter, every other run after that, you have to steer too. But straightness, I'd emphasise now, is the is absolutely imperative. The cardinal sin. Playing, in the playing match is crooked work, and that's totally unforgivable. Take note of the rear share. It's known as a skittling share. It's designed specifically to create uh, that rippling in the centre of the scratch marks. They'll be taken off now, and a normal playing share will be put on. You'll notice now that he's playing with just the rear body of the plough. The front body's running idle and it's just pressing. If you notice, it's just pressing uh, the previous slice. It's just touching that because there's a gap between the first two opposing furrows. He's going to try and close that gap. If you see now on the front board, you're just touching uh, that, uh, the, furrow, the, the, the previous furrow. And he'll do the same coming back this way. He'll push this furrow in to close that gap. Yeah, the bird and that man is probably 
Judges came just now that they quite happily trampled on the work that he's just done. Why were they doing that? Well, that's necessary, Janet. They've got to feel the work under their boots. It, one, one of the important things with competition climbing is to have it firm. It mustn't be hollow or puffy. It must be firm and stand up to hypothetically a fortnight rain. So that um, and they'll be constantly walking backwards and forwards through the centre of the plot. So, as they say, they're in the centre, they can turn left or right and see if there's any mistakes. If they look, try and do it from one end without walking over the work, uh, then they'll probably miss something at uh, the end they're not at. This is nice, this is the straightest plot in the field. It hasn't got the best comb by any means, but he has closed uh, the crown up, or the first two opposing furrows. They're shut in nicely, so that'll control the weeds that may come through or attempt to come through. You notice that this competitor is measuring off of the tape measure. He's measuring the distance between his furrow and his neighbour's furrow. That is the land he's going to plough. He's going to go running around that stone in ever decreasing circles until he's finished in the middle. It's imperative that he keeps it parallel. But here's uh, a, a, a nice crown, but, here's a big but, it's dirty. But I mean there's double showing between the furrows. That really is not good. That will come under a heading of weed control and the judge will peg him back several points for that. And here's an example of coupled work, whereby the furs can be seen as pairs rather than individuals. Now here you notice the rear fur, the back slice, is somewhat bigger than the, what the front slice is next to it. So we've got big, small, big, small, big, small. He wants the experience either see it, judges certainly will see it and will be very critical about it, but it is there. This tractor is running at 56 inch centres. Uh, that means to say that it is possible to leave three furrows intact, the three furrows on the right hand side there, three furrows intact between the wheel mark and the last furrow. Not two and a half or three and a quarter, three, and he's doing that. And he's leaving a, uh, the last, what we call green furrow, the last on cloud furrow, narrower, slightly narrower than normal. He's, he's been flying eight inches wide, that's seven, seven inches wide there. He'll turn around now and come back and plough that last green furrow out with the front body, or front uh, board of the plough. Uh, the rear board will be running in the, in the furrow on the right hand side there at about two inches deep to bring out what we call the crumb furrow. This, um, this is a, a quite a nice finish and there is a right and a wrong way to finish your plot. That is to say that you must finish on the correct headland. You lay the last furrow against your crown. So his crown was on the left hand side so the last row is laid towards that, which is correct. Had he laid it the other way, he'd have lost 30 points instantly. He's got one wheel mark, which is exactly right. If he had two, he'd have been penalised very heavily. It isn't straight. The last row on the right-hand side is too high. There's not enough step between the finish and the furrow. Over and above that, it's nice work. We've got to allow for the conditions. It's hard. We've had no appreciable rain for a long time here. But um, it'll be somewhere in the frame, I suspect. This chap will be in the honours at uh, prize giving at uh, four o'clock this afternoon. Well, I played many years ago. Uh, um, I'd taken over some land adjoining Whitehall Farm, a farm that my wife and I uh, went into when we were married. Took over some land that hadn't been ploughed in the memory of man. So it was sward, or turf, or grass, one of the same. And I ploughed this, and, and, and it caused me to think about those who had ploughed there before. Mm. And I wondered, because, as I say, it hadn't been ploughed in the memory of man. It hadn't been ploughed for 70 or 80 years, just mm. to a certain knowledge. And I thought about this, and I went home, and the following winter I thought about that, sat in my chair by the fire at night with a double gin and tonic, and I scribbled a few words, and here they are. The thoughts of the ploughman. Sincere are the thoughts of they who plough for the first time since their grandfather's day with furrows that are perfect, judge who may, land that has never borne corn but always lay. 
The headlands marked and the split is made and slice after slice to the crown is laid with steel as bright as the armourer's blade for these are men of a worthy trade. Furls angled always to the same degree, straight and matched in superb uniformity, feed rooks on insects that only they see, and from the disturbance mice and voles flee. Happy these men with time to stare, as they eat their lunch of homely fare, in the shelter of a hedge not yet bare, and talk of plough settings made with care. Thoughts turn to those who ploughed there before. Did they also above them see a hawk soar? or a fox at dawn the hedgerow tore, and were they as contented though equally poor? Surely the greatest and most satisfying toil, the careful inversion of good dark soil, no heed of travel of many a mile, practised by they who to the earth are loyal. The finished furrows are a joy to be seen, as from the last to the ridge they lean, the hue now changed that for years was green, for all is naked where grass had been. Now the sun towards distant hills quite low, weary but contented ploughmen homeward go, with pride of skill and justifiably so, their work left to be covered by winter snow. Now how about a game of chess? Are <laughs> <laughs> oh, you throwing the gold at that, Julie? I'm picking it up. I'm picking it up. Lovely. We'll play chess. Trail vintage class. Uh, th this uh, is a accommodating kit uh, made prior to 1952. And contrary to the opening on the high cut class or class four, in this class all the ground must be planned. This is, known, is a split, a double split. It's gone once up the field, the initial run with just the back body ploughing. It's a two for a plow, just the rear body ploughing. He's turned on the top head and he's come back this way and he's taken out a slice with the front furrow, uh, completing the split. You say the front body's running idle, yes. what does that mean? Well, it's not playing at all. It's, it's not in, it, it, he's not allowed to raise it out of, out of the working position, but it's running in the slot in the furrow previously made when he came this way. But old Bill Davis, this man here, is just a wonderful man. Just a wonderful man, a man you must take your hat off to. 90 years old, Ploughing now, hard work with these trail ploughs, screwing handles and moving levers and things like that. He flies his own aeroplane. He tells me he's flying tomorrow if the sun shines. Quite an extraordinary man. Really? Hope, hope for the rest of us yet. This is shaping up very well. He's um, completing the um, opposing furrows with both plough bodies in the ground, which is quite unusual. Most men with this sort of um, kit would plough the first two opposing furrows with a single furrow. In this year's ploughing match, there are 15 different classes and nine of them can be seen here. The whole ploughing match takes up about 120 acres. Apart from these old vintage tractors, you'll see brand new tractors, the huge big things that you see in fields today with big reversible ploughs. And also you'll see steam ploughing. Now, of course, this is not done commercially, but we're lucky that these two engines, one is diesel, it's converted from steam, and the other one is still steam. They come each year and they give a demonstration of steam ploughing. And then there is the horse ploughing which is actually still competition. When you're steam ploughing there are two engines and one is at one side of the field and one at the other. There is a big steel hawser that links both of them and the plough is pulled via this hawser from one steam plough to the other. The plough itself is steered and you can see a gentleman here with the wheel making sure that it runs in a straight line and the other two gentlemen sitting on there are really providing weight 
to make sure the plough actually goes into the ground and stays in the ground. At another time of year the same two machines could be used to pull a machine backwards and forwards that men sat on and planted potatoes as it passed across the ground. This is an interesting uh, piece of equipment, or three pieces of equipment, a 1937 standard Fortson tractor on unusual uh, spade lug wheels. They're unusual, they're not the normal uh, spade lugs that were issued with a tractor, I think they're very specially made. However, it's a tractor that's running really very well, and a pretty two for a ransom plough, what we call a straight beam plough, the one with a caster wheel at the back, three quarter length board. But the interesting thing, the most interesting thing about the whole outfit is the furrow press. This is devised more or less to take over from um, high cut plowing to increase the depth of the press between the uh, furrows for hand sewing or overwintering of the furrow. You can understand that uh, with a deep press like that, the furrow set up high, if the, if the plow is going to remain for spring sewing, it allows the penetration of frost and increases the possibility of a frost tilt. Unusual piece of equipment. What year did you have your first go to uh, for your first plowing match when you competed there? Oh well, I I, I, comp I started in the young farmers classes, of course, uh, immediately after the war. But my first major win was a three counties match at, at uh, Headington in on the outskirts of Oxford in 1948. Three counties being the Oxfordshire, Berkshire, and Buckinghamshire county match. How old would you have been there? Uh, Nineteen. I was born in 29. Beginning, it should be 104 or something or other. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel like it from time to time, you understand? I'd like to take a shot of this in the horse plowing, in the high cut horse plowing. You'll notice how narrow the furrows are. And this man's got it straight. You haven't been in trouble too well, but nevertheless, it's a jolly good effort. Uh, it's going quite well. I'm not sure the competitor's name, but there looks like there's half a dozen here today. I think this man's in with a very good chance. It's got a certain style to it. How do you define style? I suppose narrow and high crested and straight and clean. It's quite nice work. Let's walk along and see the rest. <laughs> At 
the 3F Snobby annual ploughing match there is a lot more to see apart from horse, vintage and modern tractor ploughing. In the marquees you'll find grain classes. You'll also find a home craft section where the ladies have their competition for things that they cook and flower arranging and sewing. There are children's competitions. You'll find a lot of rural crafts, items for sale in there, wonderful for getting Christmas presents. Around the outside, you'll find static trade stands. Yes, a lot of them are selling items specifically to do with farming, but you'll also find people selling plants and good outdoor clothing. There's dry stone walling. There's hurdle making, thatching demonstrations. Um, there's hedge laying. And you'll find there's a, a parade ground and What's shown there varies from year to year. It could be a parade of foxhounds, there could be terrier racing, uh, dog agility, um, tug of war, there'll be a tractor parade, and a demonstration of flying birds of prey. There's usually uh, little mini tractors and cars and children can have rides. There is so much more to the 3 F and a B ploughing match than just simply ploughing. It's a wonderful day out. This is Line Up with the Sun from Dazzle by the Sun. Going on this keeping low today. Must be because of this sort of in this two minutes. Oh, we can blow through this! Oh. You don't know why, but I've never known a thick bolt and fly to anybody. Yeah. We won't embarrass the uh, corporate of this ghastly finish by showing his clock number. But we take a shot of this just to show that this is just not the way to do it.